Here we are in the beautiful land of Israel on a beautiful day. And what better than to contemplate the beautiful Torah of the great Sadiq, the great spiritual master, Rabbi Nachman ben Fega. And let's meditate on what do my efforts mean? What does it mean to struggle to achieve something spiritually? What does it mean to toil to overcome challenges in my life? Does it only mean something when I finally finish the job? Does it mean something on the way? Is it worth anything if I try and try and try and seemingly it doesn't take place? How long should I try and overcome these difficulties in my life in order to achieve something special, something Kodesh, something holy? Rabbi Nachman teaches in the 11th Sicha of Sicha Turan. Ashrenu, fortunate are we, for Hashem has been good to us and given us the Kedusha of Judaism. Oftentimes we think to ourselves, why is Hashem giving us all of these mitzvot to do? What's the point of all of this? Why did Hashem make me a Jew? And we think to ourselves, it's like an all, oh, it's, 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 it's something heavy. But the truth is, it's the greatest gift to be Kodesh. If you have the schut of being Bali Tshuva, someone who grew up secular and then had some type of awakening, some realization, some epiphany that Hashem exists in our life and that we're here for something very, very important. And then you work on yourself. You try to become a better person. You try to grow spiritually, try to grow psychologically, you try to grow emotionally. And you see you take steps in Kedusha. When you look back at where you were then to who you are now, you realize what a great gift it is to be Kodesh, to be holy. It's something unbelievable. It's something indescribable. And so Rabbi Nachman says, Ashrenu, that Hashem gave us the Torah and made us Jewish. Because in this, there is the greatest Kedusha. And it says about Hashem that He's Kodesh. And there's a mitzvah from the Torah. It's a mitzvah de Oraita. Be Kodesh because I'm Kodesh. And Rabbi Nachman said, not saying that this is a weight. This is a gift. Ashrenu, that Hashem gave us the gift to be like Him. Kodesh. The Rebbe said, I have great joy simply because I was worthy of having been in the land of Israel. There is a very famous, well-documented journey of Rebbe Nachman where he took him a year to get to Eretz Israel and back, coming from Ukraine in the middle of Napoleonic Wars when no one would even think to make this trip, even if they might not think to make this at all because it's such a long trip. But all the more so, for sure, not in the middle of wars where Napoleon is taking over many different countries very quickly with great success. And Rabbi Nachman said, I cannot wait. I need to get to the land of Israel now. And even when he told his family and his family themselves were in disarray over the fact that he was leaving to go travel to the land of Israel, Rabbi Nachman says, I have to go. I can't stop for any reason in the world. I must step foot in the land of Israel. And Rabbi Nachman's whole life, even when he got very sick, and even towards the end when he knew that he was going to leave the world earlier than most would, he took great joy and satisfaction in the fact that he made it to the land of Israel. And he made it back. What was so special for him that he was able to do this, that he was able to accomplish this? Why was it so meaningful him, for him to step into the land of Israel? Was it simply because he got to the promised land? He got to the place that Hashem um, gave as an inheritance to our ancestors to give to us? Or is there something more going on? The Rebbe's voyage to the Holy Land involved much confusion and many frustrations and obstacles, including monetary. Nevertheless, he overcame all barriers and attained his goal of walking in the Holy Land. He said, I believe and understand it fully. Every movement, every thought, 
every effort made for the sake of doing something kodesh, something holy, is never wasted. So we have to understand, what does that even mean? I believe it and I understand it fully. If you believe it, you obviously don't understand it. And if you understand it, you don't need to believe it. Comes Rabbi Nachman to say, I got you on both accounts. <laughs> because Rabbi Nachman teaches in many different places that constantly a Jew is on two levels. A level of knowing and a level of believing. In fact, according to the Rambam and his Mishneh Torah, he says the goal of a Jew in this world is to believe in Hashem in one place. And in another place, he says the goal is to know Hashem. So Rabbi Nachman says it's not a steer, it's not a contradiction. The answer is both. We're here to know and believe in Hashem. What does that mean? It means that at your level at a given time, you're here to know Him. And that's a tremendous thing that you got to a higher level of knowing Hashem actualizing your potential, um, realizing a new apprehension of Hashem in your life, a new understanding, a new comprehension. But as soon as you do, you're also stumbling onto a new level of belief. There's a higher level of belief now you have to achieve. And this goes on and on. Rabbi Nachman says, this is the secret of Nasev and Nishma. We will do and we will hear, meaning I know and I also believe. So Rabbi Nachman is saying, I got to the land of Israel. I overcame everything. And there was so much going on. He was kidnapped by pirates. <laughs> he thought he was never going to be able to uh, keep the mitzvot again in the conventional way. And he actually had to think out, how can I keep Hashem's zone even in a place that I can't keep the mitzvot? And he settled on something and he felt good about it. Baruch Hashem, he made it to the land of Israel. He was able to survive that experience. And he says, I believe and understand it fully now. Every movement, movement, every thought, every effort made for the sake of doing something Kodesh is never wasted. I believe it and I know it. And you should too. And Rabbi Nachman says, when you want to do something holy, at first you're confused and you're not sure. You're standing on the balance deciding whether to do it or not. And barriers seem to be springing up on every side. Let's say, for instance, you went to Rosh Hashanah for Uman. So, not so dissimilar to Rabbi Nachman, that was in the middle of a war. There's a crazy, insane uh, leader of a certain country who has made it his business to make sure that he's going to annex whatever is near him and bring it into his own land because his whole goal is for the sake of power. And you have these holy Jews across the world who have been saved by Rabbi Nachman and his teachings and his advice. And Rabbi Nachman said in return, I just want one thing from you. Just one thing that's for me. Come to me once a year. Come to me in my Rosh Hashanah. How could you say no? You know, you're in an ocean and you're drowning. And all of a sudden you think you're done and a life raft comes out of nowhere. And you see that there is an amazing person who was watching you the entire time and finally found a way to get you a life raft. And you get out and he says, I just ask one thing of you. One day a year, come visit me. So you might think, oh, it's so beautiful. It's going to be sweet. It's going to be easy. But it's the opposite. Everyone around you is questioning your going. On top of that, you have a war going on. There's a million things that take place when a person tries to do something holy. And this is greatly intensified when you want to fulfill this advice of Rabbi Nachman. But Rabbi Nachman says, when you are worthy of completing the task, though, your every movement, your every thought, even the confusion that you had in completing this deed, they're all marked for good. They're lifted on high and made into very holy and exalted things. Fortunate is he who is worthy of breaking down all barriers and completing each holy task. Now, as a person who was able to make it, Baruch Hashem, thank God, amongst, I believe, around, I don't know, 15,000 people, 15,000 Jews, 25,000 Jews, 30,000 Jews, 35,000 Jews, I don't know the number. There was a greater sweetness this year. The Naimot, the 
bliss that came from the maniot, the obstacles, was greatly heightened and aroused. Because to the degree to which you have obstacles and challenge, the greater degree to which once you have achieved that goal, all of it turns into the sweetest bliss and ecstasy. And so we see a huge paradigm shift here. While we're all waiting for our challenges to go away and the difficulties to cease, we don't realize the greatest gift in the world are these challenges. Because all of the challenges actually contribute to the ecstasy you experience when you achieve the thing. And we see this explicitly where Rav Natan is writing letters to his son and his son is only to come, able to come to Rabbi Nachman, let's say a few times a year. And he was living near Uman. And it was very disheartened about this. Rav Natan said many times to his son, it's worth inexorbitantly more for you to come a few times with Mesir Nefesh, with self-sacrifice, overcoming many, many, many obstacles, obstacles including financial ones, than it would be for you to come here every single week. It's worth much more for you to come once on Rosh Hashanah or a few times a year where it's challenging and difficult for you than it would be for you to come all of the time, innumerably more. And this goes for everything that we try and do. So you think about how hard it is for us in our generation to do anything, to get up and pray with a minion, to put on tefillin, to wear tzitzit, to get to shul, to um, try to eat with uh, holiness, yeah? And, and the list goes on and on and on. It's so hard. It's so much harder now than ever. You don't want to see something that you're not supposed to see. You're not trying to learn things that are not good for your brain, not good for your heart. You're not trying to hang out with people who are uh, having a deleterious effect on your psychological health, on your spiritual health. These things are going to be very hard when you try and do these things. Don't think to yourself, because the thing is good, it's going to be easy. It doesn't work like that. In fact, the sure sign if you try and do something Kodesh that it's real and it's important is if it's difficult. And now think to ourselves, all the more so now in this generation that everything is so hard. How much chizuk, how much encouragement we should take from this, that this is more important to do the mitzvot than ever. It's more important now to connect than ever because otherwise it wouldn't be so hard. So you might think to yourself, okay, but I wish I grew up in the times of the tzaddikim thousands of years ago when they didn't see every image on the uh, billboard and every time that they tried to watch something Kodesh or something which was at least um, Parv, they have to shift their eyes from seeing a million things which are, which are asur, which are prohibited according to the Torah. But let's look at the Midrash. The Midrash says about King David, the soul of Mashiach, based on a pasuk in Tehilim, it says there, we say this before Mincha every day, one of your acts of self-sacrifice, your kurbanot, is worth more to me than a thousand in my home. So the Midrash says, what is it speaking about? It's speaking about how King David was heartbroken over the fact that despite that he had the original yearning to build the Beit HaMikdash, and he put his whole life into the building of this makom, this edifice, where the revelation of God would take place in this world and would draw peace into the world and happiness into the world, connection, unity, uh, divine light, and just permeate through the whole world, through this space, in the city which he chose, and then Hashem told him he was not going to be the one to do it. It's going to be his son. And even though he was very happy that it was going to be his son, like any father who's psychologically normal, um, he has no greater delight than seeing his son succeed. But at the same time, he so yearned for this. Every moment of every day, crying, screaming, toiling to achieve this in the world for not just for him, for his people, and not just for his people, for the whole world. And Hashem said, you're not going to do it, your son's going to do it. But he told him, don't worry. Every personal act of self-sacrifice that you had in your life, every trial and tribulation that you had to go through, 
whether it was your son trying to kill you, whether it was your family ostracizing you, whether it was the people of your generation questioning every single thing that you did, thinking you were actually going against the entire Torah throughout your lifetime. And only afterwards did everybody realize when your son came to the Beit HaMikdash and he could not open up the Kodesh, he couldn't get into the holiest place in the entire Beit HaMikdash, in the holiest place in the whole world, until he brought your merit. And then everyone realized that the Halacha goes according to David. It was only then that people realized that the Shekhinah was with David. His whole entire life, it's difficulty, challenge, obstacle, admatai, he screams, until when am I going to have to do all of these things, right? Not unsimilar to us in our generation, that everything is hard. Everything is hard. And Hashem says, I know we're all waiting for the Beit HaMikdash. I know we're all waiting for the Geula. I know we're all waiting for Mashiach. But you should know that a thousand korbanot that are brought in the Beit HaMikdash are not worth as much as one of your acts of self-sacrifice, of your overcoming trials and tribulations, of your starting over again, even when all evidence points to the contrary, that the tzaddik, he falls down seven times, but he gets back up. How much does it mean to get back up? We can't equate it. We can't value it that you have in the holiest place in the world, the holiest act in the world, the Qurban. And yet a thousand of them is not worth as much as King David's one act of self-sacrifice, as your act of self-sacrifice in your life on a daily basis, in anything that you do. It is the work of the Sitra Akhra, it is the work of the Satan to make us feel bad, to make us feel sad, to make us feel worthless. But we don't have to listen to him. We can listen to the tzaddik. We can listen to the one who says, Oi, Ashrenu, how fortunate are we that we get to struggle so much? Because at the end of the day, when we will, and we will, succeed and overcome every personal challenge in our life and all the challenges of the Jewish people at large, and the collective exile will end, we will see how much every thought was worth, every movement was worth, every desire, even if I didn't act on it, was worth. How many of those attempts that I tried to engage in in order to achieve something good and holy in my life, even if it didn't work out, how much that was worth we can't possibly fathom it. None of it is lost. Rabbi Nachman said, I believe it and I know it. I believe it and I know it. Every single one of us, as this new year starts, we need to take into account this very sobering and very joyful truth. You are worthy. Your efforts are worthy. Your trials and tribulations are your greatness. They are not getting in the way of your succeeding. They are your success. And when the Mashiach comes, he's going to explain every single day of your life, Rabbi Nachman says. Every day. What about all those days that I just slept in bed? What about all those days that I just ate Ben and Jerry's ice cream? What about all those days I sat in anger and confusion and sadness? What about all those days that I messed up? What about all those days that I felt worthless? Rabbi Nachman says, Mashiach is going to explain that day to you also. Why is he going to explain that day to you also? Because it meant something. It all means something. Ashrenu, that we have Judaism to show us that every single thing that we do is worth something. It's meaningful. And Rabbi Nachman says, on the day that you need it the most, all of those efforts, all of those thoughts, all of those holy wants are going to come together and they're going to push you over the top to achieve the thing that you have been yearning for your whole life to do. Bezrat Hashem, we should all see it, both on a personal level and collectively, this year in 5783. And we should experience the Pelagadol, the great wonder that came from all of these efforts in our life. And until then, get back up and start over again. And then if you fall again, do it again. Because every single one of them is worth so, so, so much. I love you guys. Thank you for listening to me. Have a great day.